On today's episode of Watch Jericho, it is a hot one. And it's so hot, Gabe's van exploded on the side of the road. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jericho and today, like I said, we are in the garage at home with Gabe's van. Why you might ask? Because it's outrageously hot outside, 104 today. See? The heat index might be higher, I assume higher. Oh, it was way higher. It was, I mean, we took out the electric skateboards earlier, we went around the block one time, and it felt like we were driving through a blast furnace. Yeah, it was, it was, it was hot. Hot. It was hot. So, the old VW Rutan decided that it was done, it was fed up, done with your... Said ain't nobody got time for that. Done with your crap. <laughs> <laughs> What, you want air conditioning too? Right, yeah, this time. Uh, no. So, the Rutan blew up and left Gabe stranded on the side of the highway for three hours. I hope you found some other place to get hide in the air conditioning. Highway Patrol yep. tagged it. They came by. Oh yeah, they, they nice. do that. Yeah. Took my donuts. But they came by and talked to you and also put the note on saying you have to leave? Well, I did go find a place to get Just, school for a while. Okay, so. okay. Yeah, they Good were call. like, okay, well. All right, then they marked it. Yeah. I see. I was like, man, that is mean. If you think they had a conversation with you, were like, yeah, they were like, now leave. Yeah. <laughs> Not it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So today, obviously, we're going to try to fix the Rutan because Gabe needs it to get back before it to work. Haul the family around, all that fun stuff. Yeah. So uh, the sky's still down. Sky's still down, but, well, no, okay. So the sky drives. Well, sure. I mean, it drives, but, you yeah. know, we got that little. Bumper got a crack. can't find a bumper anywhere. Right. But it's for sale. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Gabe didn't wreck it, but it, it's wrecked. Yeah. I didn't wreck it. No. We're not going to talk about anybody's <laughs> significant others. It wasn't his, so. Um, we're going to figure this thing out, so let's just jump right in. This is going to be a first for everybody, right? So. Yeah, we uh, have definitely not looked at this. We're being serious, obviously. No, yeah, we have. We, we have not done any diagnosis. Because uh, it was I too hot out here for yeah. that, too. We were yeah. just like. I saw the tow truck. I came home, saw the tow truck dropping this off in Gabe's driveway, and I was like, what happened to your van? He was like, it died. So uh, it literally came off the tow truck, came over here, and now we're gonna, now we're doing this. And the name of the towing company was? What was it? JR Towing. JR Towing, <laughs> that's, man, you know I bought that rollback. Yeah, but it wasn't yours. I, I hate to say it, but I know you, you had been. Uh, I, that I saw his rollback, and it was my nice. Gosh, dude, it was new and nice. But you wouldn't have left me on the side of the road for three hours. No, I would have been that right was, there. You should have called me. We could have brought the rollback. I thought about it, man. I think about. It. All right, can we find a leak? Just right, right off the bat, I can see some of those coolant kind of splatters in there. Some white coolant splatters. Yeah, might have something to do with this. All right, so. That coolant splatters on the usual Y. Is this, oh, okay. So you said you Googled it and found out that these break on a bunch of them? Yeah, these are typical places for them to break, so. That's a full hose with uh, crimped on ends, isn't mm -hmm. it? True. Nice. Nice. I see. Stupid ducks. Should we just dump a bunch of water? Oh, hey, there's a bunch of coolant back on that bottom transmission and motor mount, way down deep past my finger. You can see a bunch of orange coolant laying oh, on it. Oh, I see it. it, yeah. Well, we're in the right vicinity for this leak. Yeah, man, it was going everywhere. Gabe said the steam was rolling up around the back of the windshield. So that's why we're starting in the back. He said that he couldn't even see. Yeah, I so. was kind of concerned people start, you know, <laughs> think that I started vaping or <laughs> that I was a Subaru or something. Hey, that can happen. I see some cooling on the coil pack, top of the valve cover, kind of all over. Yeah. I vote we um, fill up the whole cooling system with water and you start it. Okay. Why not? It's the easiest way to leak check this thing. Absolutely. We'll find it quickly. I don't think this should take too much water depending on how long it ran. I guess you did say it ran for a bit, but. Well, yeah, I was kind of hard headed about it and kept going thinking, eh, I can make it to work before I have to stop for real. Yeah, I was like, I can diagnose it there and we all do it. So you think it's a buy? I do, so there's two, oh, it's already dripping. Look at that, we didn't even have to start it. You see that? Oh, uh, yeah, sure Consistent enough. Consistent drip right there. All right. If you guys can see that, hopefully. It's coming out of that back. There's two Ys. There's two different hoses with molded in Ys back there. There it is. And it is, as soon as we put in a little bit of water in the water bottle, didn't even have to start it, it is just pouring out. I mean, that is pouring out. Yeah. And there's no pressure on it at all. 
So apparently this is a common failure with these things and you can replace the plastic Y that exploded with a metal Y. So let's go shopping. We don't even need to keep troubleshooting at this point. Oh yeah. Cut the negative stuff out of your life. Are you talking about that uh, Indian guy on TikTok? That's like, uh, if you mess up today, give up, go home. <laughs> it's, he's like the funniest guy in the world. <laughs> He's like, why keep trying? I like that. It's so, I've never seen that, so, but I love it. It's so funny. Hopefully O'Reilly's has something for this. Oh, I love that. Let's go buy some parts. Half inch hose, something like that. We'll figure it out. They got a hose. <laughs> In area codes. And we are back from O'Reilly's. Here you go, buddy. Not only did they have kind of what we needed, they had exactly what we needed. Uh, you putting some more water in there? You just keep a Pepsi cup of radiator water ready to go? A little coolant in there? Well, I mean, I was drinking it earlier, so... <laughs> if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for my car. That's right. Uh, so this is the Dorman OE Fix. Never used this before. 47238 HP. So if the cooling system explodes in your, whatever, 3.6 Pentastar... Yep. Um, this is all you need to fix it, apparently. It's got three clamps in it. It's got the replacement for this plastic crimped on Y, so you don't have to buy the entire hose assembly, which I assume the hose assembly is leaking a lot of water. It is, no. You I mean, can hear it pouring out. Done. Of it. Hey, put the cap on it. Why? Because it'll put a little bit of vacuum on the system and keep it from leaking. All right. That's why. Um, All right. But anyway, 5 eighths to 5 eighths to 5 eighths Y, and this is the same as that T, and if you had to buy the hose, I assume it's about 150 bucks because custom hoses like this are expensive, and this was uh, fifteen dollars or something, right around the fifteen dollar ballpark. Oh man, I love that! So you can fix it for nothing. Hey, the car is uh, catching the coolant for us in the engine mount. Isn't that nice? Good job, Chrysler. We're gonna grab our hose cutter, which is something you might want for this job. And luckily, I've got the ratchet and cobalt one, which it might be a little hard to fit in there, but we're gonna make it happen. Not a lot of room to work, I tell you that. Nah, be alright. Oh, there's a. There's a zip tie to a wiring harness. There we go. All right, all right. Hey, that back one, is there something crazy coming out of the bottom of that tee? Or is it normal? Oh, it's normal, I see it. Yeah, no, it's just okay. that stuff around and... Hard to see back here, guys. It is at the back of the engine bay. So I had Gabe go ahead and cut the hose in half that comes down to this quick disconnect that hooks up to one of the lines going back into the engine. Uh, these are the heater core lines, actually. And then I took my grinder with a flat disc on it because we don't have a cutoff wheel, unfortunately, which is what you really need for this job. And then I just kind of used the cutoff wheel carefully to cut through this thing. So now if I take a screwdriver right now, I should be able to just pry right there and pop these. These are literally clamps that get pressed on, basically. Uh, I should be able to just pop it loose and pull the hose off, and then we can put the hose right back on this quick disconnect, thereby saving it and not having to put a... Hey, you got that cut out? Yeah, I did. All right, I did. sweet. I, honestly, I think this should go pretty quick once I get this fixed. So we just need to measure uh, this guy right here, this hose, which is about, oh, uh, I wish I had a tape measure.com. Oh, uh, hey, just hold it up beside me. There you go. That one. Let's just hold it Second up. Second knuckle. We'll do the whole hold it up, and then we'll cut that to length, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. We sure should be. Luckily, that T seems like it's a little bit longer than the factory lines. Yeah, it's quite a bit. Here, this is this is the end of the hose, oh, and that's, that's the end of the case. hose. So if you bring it to there, and I put this right back together, you need to take off a three quarter inch. Right there. Yeah, it's yeah, right right where you want. Yeah. Now a little bit of prying here, and I can pop this clamp loose just so you guys can see that this is, in fact, just a pressed on hose clamp or an expanded hose clamp. And now. Your little disclaimer, don't try this at home. No, you can try this at home. Careful just cutting. Just be careful because you don't want to replace this fitting. Cutting carefully. Careful. careful I'm cutting. sure the dealership replaces this whole hose. I mean, I would. Yeah. yeah. But I'd say this saves you a ton of money if you fix it with this kit. Oh, sure. I mean, this is. Okay, if I were the dealership, I need to clarify. If I were the dealership, I would replace the whole hose, but sure. this is definitely the way to Yeah. Because if you're at the dealership, you're trying to get that money. There we go, she came loose. All right, be careful when you're doing this. If you cut through these little plastic serrations that hold the hose, pretty much game over for you. Don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. 
Mess it up. You get one shot. Do not miss your chance. I present you with a fresh factory fitter. Nice. That hose may be a little, a little small. Oh, you're gonna need a little WD-40 to put that thing back, maybe, aren't you? Maybe a little WD-40, some... Basically WD-40. <laughs> It'll work. Oh, you got it. Look at that. This is actually, you know, I thought when you said that there was some kind of coolant problem on the back of the engine, I was like, oh, this is not gonna be fun. It's gonna be like a broken plastic manifold. Oh no, see, during my three hours of reflection, yeah. And uh, hanging out really, on the side of the road. Bro. <laughs> All right, you know how people go into the desert to have like spiritual awakenings? Yeah. So there I was on the, the <laughs> side of Kansas 96, sweating my <clears throat> bearings off. Yeah. And uh, it hit me like a vision. <laughs> this is the piece that is broken. Well, there's some crazy news for the day. Amusement park guests in Ohio are forced to walk down a 200 plus foot roller coaster by stairs after a mechanical issue. And it's Magnum XL, the best roller coaster in the entire world. There is no better roller coaster. Well, I suppose there are if, you know, the others are working. No, it said it was the result of a standard ride stoppage in the, which is definitely some kind of actual issue. But the thing is, Magnum XL isn't, um, it's not a terrible chain lift, right? Chain lifts are honestly like, they're kind of boring and obviously it's, yeah. And that's one of the tallest roller coasters in the world. It was the first giga coaster, if I remember. First hyper coaster, first giga coaster at 300 foot. And obviously it's the greatest one in the world because it's so smooth. But as soon as you come out of the, the station on Magnum XL, you like come out five foot and then just straight up at this angle. And then it's on a cable and you like fly to the top. It's like, and then All right, they, got, they got stuck halfway up, which sounds terrible, honestly. Had to walk down the stairs. No, I love that ride to death. Every time I get to go there, um, I try to be at Magnum XL when the park's closing and ride it like seven times back to back because you can just, they'll let you ride back on. Did they ever run that one backwards? Negative. I remember in. Uh, Negative. So Six Flags Over Georgia used to be able to ride the Ninja backwards. Oh, that okay. was always a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember a local radio station. Um, basically got a bunch of drunk people to ride it backwards and yeah. the results were hilarious. They were amazing. I think that clocks, doesn't that clock? Well, that clocks this way. Okay. And these clock like right on top of each other. If like you that, got the so. clocking, you're, you're I good. think I got the clocking. I mean, okay. if I don't, I'm going to, I'm going to twist it. I don't know the clocking intimately. I just had a good idea. What you know, I, I had a, I don't know much about clocking, but <laughs> for friends, <laughs> I don't know much about clocks, but I could tell time. Well, that's what it looks like if you carefully cut the old hose off, get it on there. It doesn't quite sit down because the cut's not straight, but believe me, there's like one inch. I'm of, get, I'm good. No, it's, it's good. I'm going to blame the tool. Yeah, yeah, that, it's hard to use that tool sometimes because yeah. it, it, it twists a little sideways. Uh, anyways, it's basically ready. Of all the things that could go wrong. Yeah, this is the best thing that could have gone wrong. Oh, yeah. I'm going to close this one giant hundo. ratcheting razor blade. I know it's hard for you guys to see in there. You know, there's two Ys, the back one was broken, and in just a couple more seconds, Gabe will have that thing slid into its two hoses, and mm -hmm. that's all there is to it. It's a, it's a simple fix. So here's the broken part. It looks like, if you guys can see that coolant residue, it's actually soaking wet right here at the top of the Y. That appears to be where this thing broke. So here's a bunch more of those hose clamps that you could grind through and pull the hoses off if you want. Uh, you'll need a cutoff wheel, like a Dremel size cutoff wheel so you can get in there. It's a little bit tight to work in, but that's the broken part. The metal one is replacing it and should last the rest of this car's life. Forever. Even though the hoses at some point will fail. <laughs> and then you'll probably be back with a plastic one. But hey, uh, this one lasted 130,000 miles, right? 150? Uh, 100 and... I might be at 180 now. You got some miles on this thing. Do almost 153. Nice. Well, that's how long this plastic wash should last you. Really not a big deal, especially if you can fix it for $15. Word. And we're back at O'Reilly's because we fixed the cooling system and didn't buy coolant. So we're gonna grab a couple jugs of uh, Dex Cool, which is what that thing runs, and we should be good. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Well, we got coolant. That's close enough to Dex Cool. The thing is, they don't sell Dex Cool in full strength. And maybe if you're the dealership, they do. But we already put a bunch of water in, about a gallon, and I was like, why don't we just get a gallon of full strength and then we're good. So that's why we didn't buy Dexcool, even though it takes Dexcool. I'll pour it 
pour orange soda in there. I don't care. Orange soda is the same color. Yeah, it's so, orange. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Later, guys. Thank yeah, you. Have a good one, guys. I know it's tough to see back there, but if you can see all those new hose clamps, that is the repair area, and that metal T is right there. So we've got that. Going back to the factory quick disconnect, everything's tightened down. An uh, 8mm ratchet wrench makes that pretty easy. Let's get our light out of here, and Gabe is ready to start this thing up. I don't see any leaks right now. That looks, that looks nice and new, I gotta say. Nice. Completely dry. Let's take it on a test drive. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been running for a minute or two here, but Gabe, who has way too much confidence, is just gonna go ahead and put the engine cover back on. Do it. Well, she's done now. Let's get it out on the road. I mean, even- it's not going anywhere. Even if it's broke, you already put the engine cover back on, so. Well, the job's pretty much done. Yeah, we can't yeah. go back. No. I mean, I just... Yeah, okay, I got nothing. Seal the fate. <laughs> Let's take care of the last of our problems here before we take on this test drive. Oh, you left residue all over your glass. That's the least of my issues, man. At least they didn't peel the whole sticker. I'm pretty happy with that. At least they don't write your name on it or anything. Numerical day of month checked. One. Number one. One. All right, let's go. Uh, let's take it for a drive. All right, we've been driving for a second here. Hard to see those gauges, but it's uh, under 200, which Gabe says is nominal for this car. Yep. Let's take a quick look, see if we got any leaks. Still smells like coolant, like it always does. No, that's just me. <laughs> Every time you fix a coolant leak, it smells like coolant for like a week. Yeah. I don't see any new drips. No, there's no dri new drips and definitely no steam rain. See anything under the car? Ah, it's perfect. Let's keep driving, I trust it. Sweet. Well, we drove it all around. We got ice cream. The van, the shakedown test worked pretty well. It worked great. Yeah. We're not dead. That's, and you know, it still smells like coolant, but that's just because everything under there is covered in coolant. Yes. Motor mounts, everything. So Gabe's going to hit the car wash tomorrow, rinse it off, and it'll be good to go. Anyway, good times, man. Thank you so much. If you guys need to know how to fix your VW Chrysler, or apparently that even works on Fords, it's not on the packaging, it works on Ford heater core hoses. I yeah. Don't, yeah. On all heater hoses. Whatever has a Y. Whatever has a Y. Yes. Now you know how to fix yours. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop watchjrgo.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, and I will talk to you next time. All right. Well, at least it's finally cooled off a little bit outside, too. So. Yeah. It's only what? It's only. 95 now. But 95. 95. That's, it's, uh, that's 10 degrees colder than it was when we started. That's 115 degrees. <laughs> cooler than than the car was when we started yeah. <laughs> all right Jeez. i'm out of you got to how you got to 280 i'm impressed on the what no it went past oh. it went yeah i mean that but i was like moving at 80 miles an hour so i couldn't sure. just stop right point. right i i told I you the story of when eric's water pump went out and i was like dude just start stop it you know what to do you'll you'll make it here no problem and he right. was like I finally just got tired of it and drove all the way here. I was like, <laughs> okay. That engine has another 15,000 miles on it since that happened. And is That's incredible. Has not flinched. That is incredible. Yeah. I, I don't dare try that. In it's this. crazy. Crazy. All right. Good luck. Hey, man. Have a great night. Yep, you too. Later. Cheers. Cheers.